Hello, my name is Gary Simmons and I'm building a Zenith 750 and I've got the Viking 130 engine uh, mounted right now and I'm fixing to uh, film the installation of the radiator. And so I want to begin by saying you'll need a few parts. This is uh, specific to the 750, but I believe it applies also to the 650 as well in the cruiser. So when you receive your engine from Viking Motors, you'll receive the radiator. And in addition to the radiator, you'll need to get some mounting um, hardware, such as uh, some channel that uh, you'll see in the video that's used for mounting the uh, attach points to the radiator. And so this uh, channel, as well as some uh, aluminum uh, stock that you'll need for uh, enclosing the, the radiator, as well as some uh, L-angle from uh, Zenith are all important components of, of what's needed and in order to get the, uh, the sheet uh, metal, the aluminum, as well as this channel, you can acquire this from Mick Master and here's the exact part and information as to how you can locate not only the channel but also additional aluminum and anything else you might need from this website. Uh, you will need to order specific attached uh, hardware for the uh, radiator and I'm holding in my hands the front uh, attach uh, hardware and then here's the rear attach hardware and you can uh, purchase this from the uh, Viking store and order these along with your radiator as well as all of your hoses. In addition to that, you'll need uh, a couple of radiator uh, attach uh, I'm not sure what they're called, but anyway, these go, are attached to the radiator. They go right on top there, and your hoses fit on top. Before we get uh, too far along in the installation process, I want to show you what the underside of the 750 looks like on my airplane. Uh, as you'll notice, I've already established or installed a channel cover uh, over the channel that runs at the center of the fuselage back to the uh, main gear. And within that channel uh, are uh, the uh, primary cables for the power and ground to the engine as well as the fuel line. And so all that's encased in that channel right there. And you can um, have uh, Zenith uh, make, fabricate that channel piece for you. And it's not too expensive. So we'll be mounting the radiator right there. And uh, we'll get back to that in just a bit. The first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be tapping the uh, attach point, the holes for the hardware are going to be uh, needing to be tapped with a quarter inch uh, NC20, uh, 20 threads per inch. And, um, and then I'm going to measure the distance of that hole so I don't inadvertently tap into the, uh, the uh, radiator itself. So, so there's a thickness of about, well, I'd say about a half inch so I'm going to mar want to mark my, my drill bit so when I get ready to tap that, I don't go too deep. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, where's my marker? Alright, so I've got, a, I've got a mark on my drill bit so I'm just going to be cautious and, and take it easy and not be too aggressive with getting that uh, drilled out. So we'll start that now. See how we go. All right. And now, we'll go ahead and start the tapping process. I'll go ahead and do all four holes and, and, and then we'll... So now I want to show you that I have uh, mounted the attached uh, hardware onto the radiator. This is the rear of the radiator and it's got two cushions, rubber cushions, um, that'll be attached at the, uh, within the cabin itself, uh, right underneath the pilot, the passenger seat. And then in the forward section, uh, just in front of the uh, motor are the 
Other attach points here and here, and I'll be next drilling out the hole for each of these uh, cushions. Let's see if I can get the picture of this better. Yeah, pardon me. Lack of professional. I'm trying to uh, imitate John. Anyway, uh, let's zoom in a bit. There we go. This this cushion right here, we're going to uh, cut out uh, of the channel this uh, diameter so that this cushion is free to move up and down. And then we'll rivet this uh, the, the metal piece onto the channel itself on both sides. And then we'll attach the channel at the bottom of the uh, fuselage. And then we'll have our attach points for the for the front. And we'll have to measure and drill for our attach points in the back. So that's what we're doing next. Okay, so what I'm doing next is I'm going to be drilling the channel. I'm going to be uh, making a hole for the cushion to be able to move freely through the channel on either end of this channel and then I'm going to cut the channel in half and then I'll be mounting each piece on the uh, bottom of the fuselage. I'll be using a hole saw that will be um, the right size to allow that free movement and I'll be doing it at the end, each end, and then I'll rivet this piece in place. Then I'll cut this thing in half, and I'll rivet it to the bottom of the fuselage, and then I'll have my front attach point set. All right, we got one down. One more to go. I'll come back with you. Okay, now I've uh, gone ahead and I've already installed the, uh, 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 the rubber cushions on either end of the channel. And next I'm going to saw this in half with my a hacksaw and then I'll have the two pieces that I'll mount on the bottom of the fuselage. So, turned out pretty good. Uh, you would um, mount this on the top and the cushion fits just perfectly in this, in this uh, hole right Okay, next uh, I wanted to measure the distance between each individual um, uh, this hardware stud so that I get, uh, get this measurement and I have measured it and it's from center to center it's nine and a quarter inches uh, front either side, both sides. And so I've, I've marked the center line of this particular piece of metal scrap and I'm going to place it upon the channel underneath at the center and I've also marked the width of the channel with a mark here at the bottom and one here at the top and I'll center this piece of metal on the channel and then I will add from the channel that distance on either end to uh, achieve my outermost points up right here. In addition I have measured the length from, from this uh, stud here all the way to the back. This is 27 and a quarter inches. I've also measured from this particular stud to the end of the, my firewall, and that's 26 and a half inches. And I've measured, I put a line here on this particular uh, mounting plate, and from this mounting plate will I will line this up at the edge of the firewall and this particular hole will uh, enter into the uh, firewall at the bottom I will uh, go ahead and connect up to that and then the rest of the holes uh, will connect up to the bottom of the fuselage so um, I think I've got these things prepared correctly I'm going to I drilled these out uh, in small holes and I'll enlarge them as as we go. So let me just show you underneath the airplane how I have located the places where this insulation will take place. Uh, so if you recall the video that uh, Jan was doing, he mentioned that the rear radiator attach points would land itself inside the cabin on top of this particular uh, support. And so I have placed a small dot at the center of this channel 
and I line, lined up that dot with that line and notice that there's the mark on the edge of the channel on both sides and then I just simply take the end of this where I marked the channel and line that up to that hole and over here on the other side the same thing so that's lined up and I've, I've done the same thing to the front uh, pardon this so I've lined this up here and then I found the center point there and I've also found the center point on this side you see that okay so next what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be drilling out this hole and this hole and then I'll enlarge it to uh, one quarter of an inch and then I will go ahead and mount my hardware for the front attach points and I'll center it on this point here I will pick up the firewall with a rivet here and then my other rivets will will be placed on uh, this particular part of the fuselage and either side and that should uh, give me the distance and it should be all squared up alright so here's uh, the uh, the pilot side bracket with the attach hardware and right now it's just click it in place so I'll open this up to um, an A5 on the back and the one that hits the firewall I'll do a 3 16th rivet and uh, this gives you a sense of what I had to do in order to get this thing solid I used a jack and it hit, held it in place I also made some marks that helped me with uh, locating it let's see if I can get a good picture of it so as you can probably see there's a mark right here and then a mark on the plate that I've hit and then a line that, that I've I've uh, lined this up with the edge of the firewall on that side and I'll go around and show you the other side too all right well let's see there's a better angle I guess all right and we'll get those uh, riveted in there in place they should be uh, should be a perfect fit so here's the uh, uh, picture of the installation of the radiator itself. Notice I've uh, used the aid of a cardboard box with some 2x4s uh, to rest the um, aft end of the radiator. And I was able to uh, easily, uh, because of the precise measurements, be able to go ahead and, and install the front ends first. You can just, uh, just get them started where it's hanging and then crawled underneath here and was able to uh, get um, the aft uh, hardware attach points fixed with no problem problem at all I'll remove this now and then I'll be creating the box that uh, encloses the radiator and so that'll be next I've removed the radiator from the uh, fuselage now and set it up here so you can see that I have uh, I, my plan is is to put a, a backing on this that becomes a part of the radiator itself so it, it will be um, floating on the cushions as well but one in which it's pretty much designed to fit uh, very uh, precisely to the bottom of my fuselage and that way it'll be a lot cleaner install and in order to do that, I'm going to be attaching it by virtue of these particular uh, holes. I've already tapped them for a one quarter by 20 um, bolt. And I'll be uh, bolting on a cover that will also attach to the uh, mounts up here as well, just sliding over that, um, that bolt. And um, I'll show you that in just a bit, and we'll get back to it. Also, I wanted just to mention that you, in order to do this, you have to grind down 
uh, you have to cut off and grind down these uh, pieces of plastic that are just protruding outward. They're not really uh, used at all. So you want a, a basically a, a, a flat of a surface po as possible. And then I came out with uh, a piece of aluminum that I bent uh, about one inch out and then up and then I uh, designed it uh, accordingly and I'll, I'll uh, give you a look at about that in just a second. Okay, here's the uh, uh, piece of uh, cover that I have fabricated and uh, I didn't even let the paint dry just to get up there to show everybody. Anyway, this cutouts for the channel that I have running um, at the very center of the firewall, excuse me, on the fuselage up to the firewall. And so that's, uh, that uh, opening is sufficient to allow that channel to be cleared with some space for movement. Anyway, we'll just get let that dry and then we'll just mount the radiator and then we'll build the side pieces, which should be pretty easy. All right, so now I've installed the back plate on the radiator as I'm boxing it in. And notice I've got the uh, two bolts that this is attached to and then it's pinned in underneath the uh, rubber washer here so it's pretty secure but yet it, it can move and I'll seal these uh, these gaps with some flexible uh, uh, something to fill that with I don't know what it's called I forget anyway the next step is to go ahead and box this in I'll put a, an L angle up here and a sheet of aluminum there see how that works I'll get back to you when that gets ready to be shown. Okay, now I'm going to uh, show you what I've done so far on boxing the radiator in. I'm uh, working on the pilot side right now. And I've finished the back end of the cover, which is attached to the radiator. So it's going to move up and down with the radiator. And then the side panels are going to be independent of the radiator, so the radiator can move up and down within it. And so what I've done here is a bit of a modification to make just a, a bit of a neater installation. And so what I've done is I've installed the L angle up here and riveted it uh, to this uh, uh, panel. And then I have another L angle just to stiffen this up at the very bottom here. And it, and it finishes off very nicely, I think. In addition, you may notice that Let's see if I can back this out a bit. I'll go the other way. It's backed out all the way. Not sure if you can tell or not, but the the angle of of this particular panel is slightly wider in the back, just very slightly, so that it can manage to meet here at this insert inside of this back panel. And this this as it angles over here, it catches this side of the side panel. And it covers it up and it's on the outside of the radiator right here so there's about a quarter inch difference and so I thought just to make a cleaner installation and less patching up but who knows I think each pilot has to decide how they want it to look for themselves anyway I hope this uh, this helps in the overall scheme of things so I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, the first coat of paint on this and then I'll be working on the other side. I want to take a moment to show you the uh, passenger side of the box for the radiator. Here's the piece right here that will fit on the uh, passenger side and you'll notice this end is where it meets that, uh, that reinforcement brace uh, underneath the passenger seat. And I made a little template to help cut that piece out for both sides. So it made it easier just to transfer this particular design to um, the, the part that I was trying to make. And as you can see, there is the uh, angle iron that will attach to the bottom of the fuselage and then another piece that will enclose the bottom part of the radiator. I'm gonna go ahead and paint this now and I'll put it all together and we'll close with how it all looks when it's all finished. Okay, I've completed the installation of the radiator and I'm going to describe it, how it looks right now. We'll just take you on a brief tour. Here it is from the uh, front. Give you a sense of how it played out. 
I think it turned out pretty good actually. I'm very, very pleased with the installation. Anyway, let me give you a peek at the whole project. And we'll go get a view from the back. Anyway, I hope this is helpful. It certainly simplified things for me to take an extra effort to figure things out in preparation for this video. So, enjoy.